deadly confrontation. The tension in the restaurant reached a boiling point as Ruse and Rondu's confrontation escalated. Ruse's gang, sticks menacing hyenas, watched the exchange with growing hostility. As Rondu's defiant words cut through the din, the hyenas reacted with deadly intent. Each member of Ruse's gang drew their guns in unison, pointing them straight at Rondu. Without hesitation, they pulled the trigger, sending a barrage of bullets whizzing through the air. Rondu's instincts kicked in. He quickly lowered his head, narrowly avoiding the lethal projectiles. As he surveyed the chaotic scene, his heart sank. Kuss was nowhere to be seen. Panic threatened to overtake him, but there was no time to search for his friend. Acting on pure adrenaline, Rondu grabbed the nearest table and chair, using them as makeshift shields. He charged towards the hyenas with deadly speed, forcing them to scatter. Seizing the opportunity, Rondu sprinted towards the restaurant's exit. The hyenas, momentarily thrown off balance, quickly regrouped. Bruce, his face contorted with rage, barked orders at his gang. Chase him. Don't let him escape. We must kill him. Ruse fired a series of shots towards the fleeing Rondu, but the bullets missed their mark as Rondu disappeared into the night. The escape Rondu's heart pounded in his chest as he ran through the darkened streets, the sounds of gunfire and shouting fading behind him. He didn't know how long he could keep running, but he knew he had to stay ahead of his pursuers. Suddenly, the roar of a motorbike filled the air, growing louder by the second. Fearing the worst, Rondu braced himself for an inevitable confrontation. To his immense relief, it was Kuss, not the hyenas who appeared on the motorbike. Kuss sped towards Rondu, a determined look on his face. Hurry up and get on the motorbike. He shouted. Rondu's heart swelled with gratitude and relief. Kuss had not abandoned him after all. Quickly, he jumped onto the back of the motorbike and they sped away, the sound of pursuing engines growing fainter behind them. As they tore through the winding streets, Rondu glanced over his shoulder. Ruse's gang was still in hot pursuit, their faces twisted with murderous intent. Rose, leading the charge, aimed his gun and fired. Bullets zipped past them, narrowly missing their mark. Kus navigated the twisting streets with expert precision, but the relentless chase showed no signs of abating. The sound of gunfire echoed through the city, causing panic and chaos among the civilians. People screamed and dove for cover as the hyena's bullets indiscriminately tore through the night. The Winding Streets The chase continued through the winding streets, the roar of motorbikes and the crack of gunfire creating a cacophony of noise. Rondu clung tightly to Kuss as they weaved through narrow alleys and sharp corners, desperately trying to shake off their pursuers. Ruse and his gang were relentless, their engines roaring as they closed the distance. As they rounded a corner, Rondu saw the horrifying reality of Rose's ruthlessness. The hyenas fired indiscriminately and innocent bystanders fell to their bullets. The streets were strewn with the bodies of civilians caught in the crossfire, their lives snuffed out by the gang's merciless rampage. The sight fueled Rondu's determination. He knew they couldn't keep running forever. They needed a plan, a way to escape or turn the tables on their pursuers. Kuss, sensing Rondu's urgency, shouted over the noise. We need to lose them in the alleys. Hang on. With a sudden sharp turn, Kuss veered into a narrow alleyway. The motorbike skidded on the cobblestones, but Kuss expertly regained control. The alley was tight and twisting, a maze that offered a slim chance of escape. Ruse, furious at the unexpected maneuver, screamed orders at his gang. Rusa, follow me to the left alley. The two of you, take the middle alley. The others go to the right alley. Don't come back if you can't catch him. The hyenas, trembling at Ruse's wrath, obeyed without question. They split up, each group diving into a different alley in pursuit of Rondu and Cuss. The daring decision, Cuss turned to Rondu, his face etched with determination. We need a plan to get rid of the hyenas. I will let you ride the motorbike and you must go to the right. I will jog to the left. Remember, when you reach the intersection about five kilometers from here, you must turn left. Don't go straight. We have to split into two directions to find a way to escape. If the hyenas meet me, I will die today. If unfortunately the hyenas meet you, you know the outcome, right? Rondu immediately responded, his voice filled with remorse. I'm really sorry. If I had listened to my mother, I wouldn't have gotten you into this trouble. Kuss smiled gently, his eyes filled with understanding. It's okay. 
Everyone must die, it's just that it comes sooner or later. Never mind, I'll be okay. Rondu continued. Or you can drive the motorbike. I'll run because I'm stronger than you. Cus shook his head and smiled. Idiot. You don't know the roads here as well as I do. I will easily escape them. Hurry up. Don't wait any longer. We don't have time anymore. With that, Kus said goodbye to Rondu and jogged to the left. Rondu, filled with a mixture of fear and determination, mounted the motorbike and sped off to the right. As he rode, he suddenly remembered that he forgot to ask Kus why he had to turn left at the intersection and not go straight. This thought was interrupted by the sound of two hyenas closing in, their loud gunshots echoing through the night. The bullets whizzed past Rondu's head, but he managed to keep his focus and accelerate away from the danger, the chase. The sounds of motorbikes and gunshots blended into a chaotic and unforgettable rhythm. The two hyenas relentlessly pursued Rondu, firing their guns from behind, but their bullets missed their mark. Rondu navigated the winding streets, his heart pounding with each passing second. In front of Rondu loomed a dense forest, and just as he neared its edge, the motorbike sputtered and ran out of gas. He had no choice but to abandon the bike and continue on foot. The relentless pursuit of the hyenas left him with no other option. He dashed into the forest, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The dead forest. Suddenly, one hyena stopped in his tracks. The other hyena, puzzled, asked, Why do we have to stop and not continue the chase? If we don't catch him, we will die at the hands of the big brother. The first hyena shook his head and replied, We must stop the pursuit. Stop chasing. Either way, he won't come back. No one has ever escaped from this forest. The second hyena looked bewildered, not understanding what was going on. But, the first hyena turned around and replied, This is the dead forest. Don't you know? Just go back and say he went into the dead forest, and Big Brother will spare your life. Come on, let's go. With that, the two hyenas got on their motorbike and calmly returned to Roos, leaving Rondu to navigate the ominous forest alone. The ominous rumors, when Rondu entered the dead forest, he had no idea that this was a mysterious forest laden with ominous rumors. The truth was chilling. No one who ventured into the dead forest ever came back out. Kus, a trusted friend, had warned Rondu not to go straight, but to turn left. Unfortunately, due to the urgent pursuit of two relentless hyenas, Rondu had no choice but to flee blindly leading him to become hopelessly lost in the dead forest. The dead forest was a chilling and mysterious landscape, where darkness not only cloaked the environment, but also seeped into every crevice. Giant ancient trees stood silently like immobile sentinels, their gnarled trunks and intertwined branches resembling grotesque hands stretching out from the underworld. The eerie sounds that filled the air seemed to come from all directions. The rustling of dry leaves underfoot mimicked the whispers of lost souls, while the wind howled through the trees, creating cold, menacing sounds akin to the growls of unseen predators lurking in the shadows. These unnerving noises merged to form a terrifying symphony, causing anyone who entered to shiver with fear. A layer of mist adorned the cold space, making everything appear ghostly and strange. The frigid air from the ground seemed to crawl up through every crack, seeping into Rondu's muscles and making him acutely aware of an otherworldly presence. An eerie silence dominated the forest, broken only by sudden and haunting noises. The dead forest was not merely a place but a living, breathing entity that evoked awe and dread in anyone who dared to tread its paths. Rondu was horrified by the scenery around him. The darkness appeared to consume everything, turning ancient trees into towering phantoms, with roots coiling like giant serpents waiting to ensnare the unwary. Eerie noises emanated from every direction, the rustling sounds resembling the whispers of lurking souls. The winds howling through the leaves sounded like the cries of invisible beasts. Despite his fear, Rondu had no choice but to keep moving. Each step felt heavier, but stopping meant certain death. The further he walked, the more the path seemed to vanish, with new routes appearing like death's welcome. The space expanded, but felt suffocating, making Rondu feel like prey in the grasp of an invisible, cruel force. Rondu's throat was dry and felt as though it were on fire. Every breath burned as it entered his lungs. Hunger gnawed at his stomach, 
turning each step into an ordeal. He had to find something to eat and drink, but in this dark forest, everything seemed fraught with danger. He searched every tree and bush, hoping to find water and wild fruits to sustain himself. Cold sweat dripped down his face, but his eyes remained determined. Rondu knew that he had to keep fighting to escape the dead forest. Rondu felt an eerie gaze upon him. The sound was like the wind's hiss, mixed with a mysterious sibilance echoing through the quiet space. He turned, eyes wide, but saw nothing. His heart pounded wildly in his chest, as if trying to burst free. Again he felt cold breath on the back of his neck, raising goosebumps all over his body. He turned around, but saw no one. What's happening? He whispered, his voice trembling with fear. As Rondu turned to leave, he saw two lights flash and dart toward him. Moving swiftly, he leaned forward to avoid them, his heart racing. Under the dim moonlight, Rondu was horrified to see a giant python about nine meters long. The two lights he had initially seen were the python's reflective eyes. From about four meters away, the python spat a liquid at Rondu. He managed to step back, but the liquid hit his shirt, causing it to smoke and smolder. If it were just a python, it wouldn't have venom, Rondu thought. But why does this python know how to spit venom? What is this? This venom is a hundred times more potent than Ruse's snake. With no other choice, Rondu fled from the strange python. Drawing on the hidden strength and inheritance from his father, Ruda, Rondu ran for ten minutes straight without feeling tired. When he finally stopped to assess the situation, he was horrified to realize that he was back where he had first encountered the python. The forest seemed to be toying with him, reinforcing the sense of a malevolent, living entity. The breath of calm, Rondu quickly took a deep breath and exhaled slowly to reduce his fear and anxiety. This was a technique his mother, Durika, had taught him for dealing with unfavorable situations. In the dim light of the dense forest, Rondu's breathing gradually became more regular, and his anxiety and fear began to dissipate. He focused on the rhythm of his breaths, each inhale drawing in strength, and each exhale releasing tension. His mother's voice echoed in his mind, Stay calm, Rondu. Breathe and control your fear. You have the strength within you. The sudden attack. But suddenly, from the darkness, a black shadow rushed forward with terrifying speed. Rondu had just enough time to react, his hands reaching out instinctively to grab the neck of the black shadow. In a moment of panic, Rondu realized that the attacker was none other than the ferocious python that had not yet let him go. The huge python launched itself at Rondu with stealth and precision, its scales glistening ominously in the dim light. With the strength of a warrior, Rondu wrestled it to the ground, trying to avoid the venom spraying from its mouth. The struggle became fierce. The python seemed stronger, writhing and twisting in an attempt to escape Rondu's steel grip. Sweat poured down his face, and Rondu's eyes filled with a mix of determination and despair as the python gradually slipped from his grasp. The desperate struggle. In that moment of danger, the memory of the gun his mother had given him before he left home suddenly flashed in Rondu's mind. Without hesitation, Rondu used one foot to press down on the python, creating space for his other hand to grope in his pocket. His trembling fingers searched frantically for the life-saving weapon in this battle of life and death. Finally, when Rondu held the gun in his hand, the python escaped from his arms and legs. It immediately wrapped around Rondu, squeezing him tightly. The python's grip was like a vice, and Rondu felt as if he couldn't breathe due to the immense pressure. His chest felt compressed, making it difficult for his lungs to expand and his breath to flow. The battle intensifies. In a desperate situation, Rondu pulled out the gun and shot straight into the python's body. The bullet injured the python and loosened its grip enough for Rondu to take a deeper breath. However, the python continued to attack, baring its fangs and preparing to strike again. Rondu immediately raised his left hand to strangle the python. While holding the gun in his right hand, he aimed carefully and shot the second bullet into its head. The python halted momentarily because of the bullet, but unfortunately, it only pierced its left eye and not its brain. The python continued to struggle fiercely, trying to escape Rondu's grip. Exhaustion crept over Rondu as the relentless battle continued. He thought to himself, there is only one bullet left, it's either you or me, this will be my grave if I fail. 
the final confrontation. When the python opened its mouth to bite Rondu again, he fired the last shot. The bullet passed through the python's mouth and went straight into its brain, causing it to die instantly. Rondu released the python's lifeless body to the ground and gasped for air, his chest heaving with the effort. What luck. Now my job is to get out of this damn forest, he whispered, his voice shaky but resolute. The aftermath Rondu collapsed to the ground, his entire body trembling from the exertion and the adrenaline coursing through his veins. He closed his eyes and focused on his breathing, letting the tension slowly ebb away. The forest around him seemed to quieten, as, as if it acknowledging the end of the fierce battle. The oppressive atmosphere lifted slightly, but the eerie silence and the ever-present shadows reminded Rondu that he was still in a perilous place. The Journey to Survival Despite the victory over the python, Rondu knew he couldn't afford to rest for long. The dead forest was still a dangerous place filled with unknown threats. He got to his feet, his legs shaky, but his resolve stronger than ever. The gun, now empty, was still clutched in his hand. He tucked it back into his pocket, feeling a pang of gratitude for his mother's foresight. Rondu looked around, trying to orient himself. The forest was a maze of twisted trees and thick undergrowth, and every direction looked the same. The Dilemma of Desperation Hungry and thirsty, Rondu looked at the dead python lying before him with a fragile glimmer of hope, searching for some solution to escape his desperate situation. An idea flashed in his mind, but it was quickly extinguished by the feeling of disgust at the thought of eating raw python meat. The thought repulsed him, but the reality was harsh. There was no other way. He could either starve to death right here, or eat the raw python meat to survive and find a way out of this ghostly forest. The grim decision. Faced with this grim choice, Rondu's mind raced. He thought of his family, his mother Durika's voice encouraging him to stay strong. The determination to survive and see them again outweighed his revulsion. Stealing himself, Rondu knew what he had to do. With no time to waste, he took out his gun and used the sharpest part to cut open the python's stomach. The python's skin was extremely tough, resisting his efforts. Rondu used the last bit of his strength to press the makeshift blade deep into the python's belly. After a prolonged struggle and exerting all his effort, Rondu finally managed to cut open the python, remove its internal organs, peel the skin, and extract the fresh meat. The taste of survival. The characteristic smell of python meat was strong and unpleasant to Rondu. It was a combination of chicken and fish, with a fishy and wild scent that turned his stomach. Closing his eyes to block out the smell, he forced himself to eat, driven by the gnawing hunger in his stomach. Each bite was a battle against his senses, but he knew it was his only chance to survive. Quenching thirst with blood. But what about his thirst? Rondu decided to drink the python's blood, to quench the dryness in his throat. The python's blood tasted metallic, salty and fishy, making it difficult to swallow. However, he had no other choice. With each mouthful of blood and flesh, Rondu felt he was overcoming the harshest test of survival. Little by little, he was inching closer to the hope of surviving and, and escaping this dark forest. The strength to persevere. As he consumed the python, Rondu could feel a strange strength returning to his body. His muscles, previously weakened by exhaustion and hunger, now felt reinvigorated. The sustenance provided by the python, though far from ideal, was enough to keep him going. The bitter taste of blood and the tough texture of the meat became a reminder of his will to survive, pushing him forward despite the dire circumstances. The mind's battle. While his body found the strength to continue, Rondu's mind waged its own battle. The grotesque act of consuming raw python meat and blood tested his sanity. He fought to keep his mind focused on the goal of escaping the forest, reminding himself that this was temporary. Thoughts of his family and the life waiting for him beyond the forest kept him anchored, preventing despair from taking hold. The search for an escape. With his immediate hunger and thirst sated, Rondu turned his attention back to the forest. He had to find a way out. The dense canopy and labyrinthine paths seemed to conspire against him, but he refused to give up. Rondu moved cautiously, every sense on high alert. The forest's eerie silence was occasionally broken by distant rustling or the call of an unseen creature. Each sound sent a shiver down his spine, but he pressed on, 
driven by the hope of finding an exit.